Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen today with a stack of news for you. There is a Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.3 patch out for testing. Monthly reports and the day of Vara are all incoming. We've got some new sub promotions going on and some dev responses. And we've got the questions of, is there any point in reporting bugs? And there's a load of answers to river-based questions as well at the new RiverTech coming in 3.18. Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.3b is a patch that is available to test for everyone on the PTU at the moment. Its primary focus is to check a couple of major server crashes that are supposed to have been fixed and gather data on some balance changes done to the content of lootable containers in the Persistent Universe. Cloud Imperium will be looking through the analytics for all items found or looted from containers to see if the changes are working as intended, so it's encouraged that players get involved because the more testing data there for them, the better. This appears to be a blocker for releasing that Alpha 3.18 persistent entity streaming build to the Eva Carti. There are some other updates and fixes in the patch too. They made many adjustments to ground vehicles, um, reducing speeds across the board. A huge amount of them have had speeds reduced and they've increased the speeds of the Grey Cat PTV, that little buggy. I wonder why. Uh, players landing at docking port 4 in Orison Spaceport should no longer receive a trespassing warning and can receive a crime stat. They fixed an issue causing Wallace Klim, the NPC, to have skin artifacts and low res textures, and they fixed an additional two server crashes and a back end server crash causing a 16,008 error. There are a load of known issues in this patch still, with some of the most egregious bugs being targeting and pips breaking when flying around in a ship and trying to fight, uh, shield holes, uh, missing NPC spawns for missions, items disappearing between sessions, stations being offset from their Lagrange points where they're supposed to be, and ships can sometimes end up in an unknown state. I don't know if these are going to be addressed before Alpha 3.18 is released or not, but it's likely that this patch is just a prelude to 3.18 tests starting, so I don't think there's any real need for Cloud Imperium to um, fix some of these problems. Um, they will try if they can, and um, if they're something that is more 3.18 dependent, well, they'll wait to 3.18. For the rest of the week, we've got uh, the Persistent Universe and Squadron 42 monthly reports coming out later today. I believe that next month we don't get the monthly reports, and they have a large one the month after, so about that in mind, we'll be covering those sort of monthly reports over the next couple of days. The Day of Vara Halloween celebrations start on Thursday the 6th of October as well. That will last for the rest of the month. Previously, they've had unlockable masks obtainable in-game for PvP and exploration, and we should see some spooky skins on sale for ships. Buyback tokens have had some form of issue with their distribution, so these allow players to repurchase previously melted uh, ships. Ships turned into store credit uh, once a quarter by using store credit. You can do that anytime with real money, but you can also use your store credit to do it once a quarter. And if they've not already gone out now, they will go out shortly. The next token is expected around the 10th of January 2023. I saw a dev response that I want to talk about. I'm seeing no benefit in reporting bugs was the name of the thread on Spectrum I saw this in. The original poster there says he truly wants to participate and uh, sort of report issues. He wants to get involved with bug reporting. However, gets the feeling that it's not worth their time with how things are currently set up for it. They feel the system relies too heavily on players upvoting their issues and that when a report um, you've made is valid and important but doesn't get upvoted, it can discourage you from participating in the future. Uh, Sylvan CIG responded to this. I'm sorry if you feel that way and I can totally understand you. As upsetting as it may be, it ensures that we, the devs who actually fix these issues, will not get swamped with bugs which just happen once or twice for a handful of people. I'm just speaking for myself here, just usually I ignore extremely rare issues when they land on my table because sometimes they tend to fix themselves, so looking at them is simply not worthwhile. Unfortunately, our time is finite, and we have to be deliberate where we put our time into. Yes, bugs are annoying and they need to be fixed, but at the same time, we also have to make sure we progress on our actual tasks. And I can tell you that all of us spend a significant amount of time bug fixing, but that's just the nature of development I've accepted a long time ago. We do also have an automatic system in place which uploads every crash dump to a public database and classifies them. So 
even if you don't use the issue council, this issue gets tracked and you're helping us by just playing the game. The issue council is really meant to find the most annoying bugs for the community by upvoting. It appears this crash you're having is unique to you. It's hard to say what it is without a crash dump for me to look at, but it may be a unique combination of a hard and software you're using with Windows 11 question mark. Also deleting your user folder might be worth a try. Thanks for your time and concerns, making Star Citizen better. Salute! Uh, so, I think that was really uh, quite a good response. It's nice to know that it doesn't matter if you report on the sort of issue council, so a lot of test data is still sort of uh, gathered from crash um, reports and, 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 and logs and that sort of stuff. And um, it's obviously worthwhile to go on to the um, sort of issue council and report bugs um, because then it's more likely that those bugs will be found and fixed if they are um, urgent or egregious or if they can be fixed easily. But it is fixing bugs via popularity but that popularity means that a lot of people are experiencing that bug and that's the idea of the issue council. October 2022 subscription promotions. So the subscriber ship of the month for RSI subscribers is the MISC Hull A. That's available to uh, all RSI subscribers to use throughout this month. There's also a promo for the hover quad if people are interested in that. And this month's sub flare is uh, Cutlass Plushies. It's a Cutlass Black Plushie for Centurion subs. Then Emperator subs get the Cutlass Red as well. And in the sub store, there's the Cutlass Blue and Steel Plushies. Very silly um, little things this time, but uh, some people will be happy with that. There were some River Tech questions that are largely related to uh, 3.18 and beyond with the River Tech, and CIG's Figwig answered them. So uh, let's go through these questions and answers. Will River Width be variable in the future or current revisions to make them look even more organic? We already do this. I just didn't show it in the most recent Inside Star Citizen. You can see in the current River Live in the PU that we change width along the course of the river. The new rivers have even more variation. Have you guys talked to geophysicists or geologists to try and identify how rivers are made in nature and then use those principles to inform design or even procedurally generate them? I've done a good amount of research over the development of rivers into river formations, erosion, sediment types, etc. I've not actually spoken to any geologists formally, but a relative works in flood simulation and I've had a few conversations with him. Our rivers are already procedurally generated, but we have a slightly different approach to solve than most erosion algorithms. Our planets already have lovely height maps, which are then distributed across the planet and the terrain is already fixed. So the river erosion simulation is less how would the water shape the landscape and more where would a river be given this existing landscape. Of course, we do change the landscape often quite significantly, but the algorithm aims to leave most of the terrain alone. This is also for performance reasons. Terrain modification is essentially a post-process added after our terrain generation. Are there any plans or thoughts about how features like rocky rapids and uh, slow wide sections could be implemented? We already do this. However, the flow speed of the river isn't visibly different due to shading limitations. I'm taking a look at our water shaders this quarter, which will unblock many features that are waiting to be added to rivers, tributaries, in situ lakes, multiple lake entrances, exits, estuaries, and more. How feasible is procedural generation given the current version of Planet Tech? Our rivers, like our planets, are procedurally generated ready, but there are many different ways of procedurally generating a planet. As mentioned, our erosion algorithm achieves something slightly different to most, which is to use an existing terrain and aim for minimal modification. This won't change in Star Citizen, as the focus of our planet tech is getting an entire planet's worth of terrain in as few megabytes as possible and rendering it as fast as possible while delivering high fidelity results. There are good explanations of our tech out there already, but essentially it limits us to keeping our planetary data non-location specific. We currently store about 32 square kilometers of height maps per planet and extrapolate that data to create the whole planet the same way every time. Storing location specific data for the entire planet would increase our budget from a few megabytes to multiple terabytes, so it's not really viable. Is the water actually there as a 3D substance? 
Nothing in graphics is truly 3D apart from the volumetric sims, clouds and fog. That said, the water is currently missing physics. This will come probably when the actor team implements swimming. Water in other games is usually a 2D service and then underwater fog and physics and audio to make it feel 3D. Our fog underwater is a volumetric fog sim, so that is truly 3D. Once water becomes an obstacle, will we see land bridges and man-made bridges dotted around? I can't commit the locations team to any work, but I'd be surprised if we never saw any bridges, etc. Will we see sheer cliffs and more types of hill and mountain in-game? Yes, but no timeline on that. Boom! That's it for today's news and dev responses. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to the Day of Vara celebrations? Are you going to be testing 3.17.3? Are you hoping that that isn't what we're going to be getting for uh, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo uh, and uh, later on in November and that we actually do get a 3.18 release? What are your experiences with bug reporting? Are you excited for a load more improved rivers turning up in Alpha 3.18? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Nordcon 2952, the road to Nord 4.0. What do you want out of NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer? Nord base building? Nord hunting 2.0? A dynamic Nordonomy? I'm personally looking forward to the latest Nord Cruiser. In the meantime, I'm going to make do with NordVPN protecting my data from insidious space pirates and giving me unrivaled access to all the content that the internet has to offer. Use the links below. Note Nordcon 2952 does not actually exist. Also adding to my shell pile, Toby Eye Tracker 5 gives you precise head tracking and control with your eyes. That's the sound of my eyes controlling the lasers, giving you unprecedented immersion in Star Citizen. You can basically aim lasers with your eyes. Pew pew! Use the links below and code BoardGamer for discount. Every month we have a ship giveaway for Star Citizen. For October, we're giving away a Cutlass Black with pirate skin, lifetime insurance, and Star Citizen game package. All you need to jump into the game. Just comment on any of my videos made during October to be in for a chance of winning that. If you would like to further support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member with the join button below my videos or potentially becoming a Patreon. You'll get access to some exclusive content and it really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video and have a great October.